Hello friends, this video on environment chemistry part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's talk about water pollution. See, water is almost 80% of the earth. If you see the earth is blue, why it's called blue planet? Because most of them is water. Almost 80% of the earth is water. And water is in the form of oceans, lakes, glaciers, polarized, groundwater. So these are various forms of water. Correct. Also, water is very essential for us. We can't live without water. There will be no life without water. We almost consume 2 to 3 liters of water per day. And you see, the whole body, 70% is water. But the sad part is, whatever water we have here, 97% is unfit because most of them are salty, like the ocean water. They are not fit. We have huge water, but 97% of them are unfit to drink. Also, survival of plant is also dependent on water. Without water, plants will also not survive. So, humans will not survive, plant will also not survive. Water is very, very critical. But nowadays, water pollution is happening at a large scale. Most of the rivers around the world are polluted because of large scale industrialization. Water is also required in industries because without water, industries won't run. For agricultural purpose, it is required, and for domestic use also, kitchen, you know, you see, water is required. Without water, you can't prepare food. So, what are the source of water? Sorry, what are the source of water pollution? So, water pollution originates from human activities, the various sources. We will call point source and non-point source. We'll just understand what are those. They are generally because of human activities and through different paths, it finally reach groundwater or the ocean. As I told, there is something called point surface, point source, which you can easily identify. Example, municipal and industrial discharge pipes, factory discharge pipes, right? Those are my point source. You know that there are some 10 factors in this town and each of these 10 factors you know, discharge so much polluted water in this river, there is some river, let's suppose. So you know that they were, these are fixed points and from these we are getting water pollution and you can control that. There is something called non-point source. The source cannot be identified. For example, agriculture now, there is a huge water, huge rain, a lot of water pollution will happen because there are pesticides, insecticides, herbicides used in this uh, agricultural land and that will uh, wash off and uh, that will cause pollution. Sometimes the acid rain will cause water pollution. Sometimes due to heavy uh, rainfall, the storm water will also cause uh, water pollution. These are non points, so you can't identify the source of this kind of water pollution. So, right? So there are two kinds of source of water pollution, point source and non-point source. So we'll see some of the water pollutants and its source. So the pollutant is microorganisms, the source is domestic sewage. It is organic waste, so organic waste can be domestic sewage, animal excreta, decaying animals, plants, and from food processing industry. We talk about the plant nutrients, it's chemical fertilizers, we talk about the toxic heavy metals, it comes from industries, we talk about sediments, it is generally from the soil erosion, talk about pesticides, generally used uh, from the insecticides, fungicides, and weedicides uh, in the Agricultural, it can be a radioactive substance from mining or also from the nuclear plants or the heat used for cooling industry. We'll talk about each of these actually. Right? But before we talk about those kind of pollutants, understand the role of oxygen in water. Oxygen plays a critical role in water. In fact, dissolved oxygen has a critical role in water. Right? Because because of dissolved oxygen, these aquatic green plants, they survive. The aquatic animals, they survive in the water. Right? Dissolved oxygen is very important for aquatic life. The concentration of dissolved, dissolved oxygen is less than 6 parts per million. The growth of the life of the aquatic animals will be in danger. Right? So, this has to be more than 6 parts per million. Correct. So, 
the oxygen when I'm talking about a dissolved oxygen that reaches this water through atmosphere or from the photosynthesis that is carried out by the aquatic green plants during day. All right. So this is how you get dissolved oxygen in water and that is very critical for aquatic life. Correct. So two things. One thing, the source of dissolved oxygen in water is either through atmosphere because the atmosphere has oxygen here. Right. So it will get dissolved or in the morning sunlight these plants prepare oxygen. And this is very critical for these things, these things, or the aquatic animals. Correct. So, as I told, I'll discuss all this. The cause of water pollution is the sewage and the oxygen demanding waste, the pathogens, the plant nutrients, the chemical pollutants, suspended so solids, radioactive substance, thermal discharge, oil also. So, we'll talk about these many causes of water pollution. The first is the sewage and organic waste. So in sewage we can have anaerobic bacteria which doesn't require oxygen, right? So they break down organic waste and produce chemicals that are foul smell and they are harmful to people. So if I have sewage which has anaerobic bacteria, they will break the what do you call waste, organic waste and that will produce foul smell that is harmful to human health. If I have aerobic bacteria in this cell, the one which requires oxygen, they will decay this organic waste and the key, they will degrade, they will degrade this organic waste and they will deplete the water with dissolved oxygen because this is they are aerobic, right, since they are aerobic bacteria, right. They will need oxygen. If they need oxygen, for example, there is some aerobic bacteria here, they need oxygen and they will consume oxygen from water. They will consume oxygen from water, that means they will consume the dissolved oxygen from water and they will deplete the oxygen concentration in water. So either if they are anaerobic bacteria, they won't decrease the oxygen concentration but they will create foul smell and that will be harmful to human being. If they are aerobic bacteria, they will decrease the concentration of water, so the oxygen. In water. So, in both the case, they are harmful to human life. Right? And the amount of oxygen required by bacteria to break down organic matter is called biochemical oxygen demand. So, this implies that more is the organic matter present in the water, the more is the BOD. Right? So, pure water will have less organic matter. So, the BOD will be less. The polluted water, the polluted water will have more organic matter and thus will have high BOD. So if you see the clean water has less BOD 5 part per million and the polluted water has high BOD that is 17 part per million. Correct. So BOD is nothing but the amount of oxygen required to break down organic matter whatever is present in a sample of water. So lesser is the organic matter, the cleaner is the water and the less is the BOD. The next is the pathogens. So they are also the serious water pollutants and they are disease causing agents and these include bacteria and other organisms they enter generally from the domestic sewage or the animal excreta so if you have vegetables and these vegetables are all waste right so in that case these vegetables will cause pathogens they cause cholera typhoid dysentery polio uh, gas hepatitis all these illness you get because of this pathogens these are my pathogens the next is the plant nutrients. See, plant nutrients is nothing but what? Fertilizers which are used in agriculture, these are plant nutrients. If you have more plant nutrients, you'll have more plants. More plants is fine, right? But when they decay, when they die, they produce bad order. See, if there is high population of aquatic plants, they will die. They die, they produce biota. That is also a problem. Correct. Also, since I have a good plant nutrients, it will have all plants, plant, plants. Since the plant will be more, see, see, the space is limited, right? So, if you plant more trees in that, then this will go 
Similarly, in this water body, let's suppose we plant more and more, more and more trees, more and more plants. Since more and more aquatic plants will come up, what will happen? With this, the space for these animals will not be there, right? Because more and more aquatic plants will come up. And what will happen? This will become a big jungle kind of thing here, and they'll die. Right? When they die, they are dis disturbing the aquatic life. Correct. So if you see these plants, if you have more and more plants, because of the dense plant population, the animals die. Correct. And this process is called eutrophication. Because the plant nutrient, more and more plants, more and more plants, the animals, the aquatic animals die. And this is called eutrophication. The next is chemical pollutant. In chemical pollutant, we have organic and inorganic chemical pollutant. So we'll talk about inorganic chemical pollutant, right? So inorganic chemical pollutant can be heavy metals such as cadmium, mercury, nickel, etc. These are my inorganic chemical pollutants. So you know, talking about water pollen, pollution, we'll talk about water soluble inorganic pollutants, right? These are dangerous because when you take this, when you consume these uh, heavy metals, you cannot excrete them. And over a time, you keep consuming it, their limit crosses the tolerance limit. And this can damage the kidney or central nervous system or kidney. It will make you ill. It can also cause death. Right? Because see, for everything, there is a maximum threshold, right? And these uh, elements, when you consume it, you won't be able to excrete them. And over a period of time, their concentration increases. The concentration increases above the threshold. That means it will cause damage. The next is the organic chemical pollutant, right? So organic chemical pollutant can be petrol. For example, petroleum is the major source of poly pollution. And if you see the oil spills that happens in the ocean because this petrol has a lower density, it floats on water and it also doesn't mix with water. So when if you put some oil here, it will form a oil spill, right? And this is harmful because uh, the oxygen concentration will go down in the ocean. Right, the proper sunlight, uh, the aquatic life won't achieve, and they'll also die. This is a major cause of pollution for aquatic life. Right, other industrial chemicals like my polychlorinated biphenyls, they are fertilizers, detergents, cleansing solvents, they are also water pollutants. And please note, this polychlorinated biphenyls are suspected to be carcinogenic, right? They cause cancer. They are carcinogenic. So the oil spills, they are the major one. And PCBs also are the many. The next is the sediments. So sediments are my sand, cells, eroded minerals. These are my sediments. They also cause water pollution. See what they do? They settle in the dam. They reduce their storage capacity. The dams and the reservoirs, anything, and they reduce their storage capacity. Right? They also block the sunlight because since if you see here, if you have sand and dust particles here, right? It will block the sunlight. It will block the sunlight. That means it will. These plants won't grow. This plant won't grow. What will happen? These animals won't be able to feed on the plants, right? The food for this fish will be less, right? This is all it's without direct impact. The next is the radioactive waste. So they are also carried into water from the nuclear power plant or from the mining, so uranium and thorium mining. Also from the medical and scientific institution, for example, for the treatment of cancer, radioactive minerals are used. In fact, for the detection of cancer, the PET scan, you use radioactive minerals. The, uh, chemotherapy and um, all this radiotherapy, there we use radioactive minerals. So the medical institutes also use radioactive uh, substance. They can also be a radioactive waste from these places, right? And these radioactive substance also are harmful for aquatic life. They are harmful for human being also. The oil discharge. So as I told, this oil 
an oil waste enter into the water bodies from the oil refineries or from the automobiles uh, or from the tankers right tankers also and these since this oil is insoluble and their density is less they float in water they form thin layer and this reduce the dissolved oxygen level in the water body it is also responsible for death of birds why because this oil this penetrates into the feather of the bird and this affects their floating and flying capability their buoyancy and all everything is impacted they uh, they will not be able to float or fly and thus they die we'll talk about thermal discharge now so if you see water is used as a coolant agent if you see thermal power plants and nuclear power plants their water is used as a coolant agent so what happens is cold water is taken in and the hot water is discharged back to the water bodies now since the hot water is discharged in the water body the temperature of the water body increased now we have seen most of the chemical reaction you increase the temperature of the reaction increased right the speed of the reaction increased so the rate of the chemical reaction increased because the temperature of the water bodies here now is more because this guy will discharge hot water so the temperature of the water body increase then the reaction also increase and thus the oxygen also depletes easily correct the rate of evaporation also increase because the temperature is more for this water and it can evaporate easily now we'll talk about international standard of drinking water see after observing so many issues health issues in so many people because of the contamination in water this international standard of drinking water was established and they recommended the maximum concentration of various metals in water for example fluorides lead sulfate nitrate and other metals such as iron magnesium aluminum they recommended a maximum concentration of these uh, uh, metals in water for example fluoride fluoride deficiency in drinking water is harmful it can cause tooth decay right so because these fluoride ions make the teeth much harder so fluoride soluble fluoride is sometimes added to drinking water to bring its concentration up to one part per million but if you have fluoride ions more than two part per million it cause brown mottling of teeth cause brown mottling of teeth so it has to be in one to two part per million range lead if you see lead lead versus the pipes are lead pipes actually so drinking water it gets contaminated with the lead pipes because this lead pipes are used for transportation and the maximum limit for the lead in water is 50 part per million lead can cause damage in kidney liver or the reproductive system of the human being this is my lead talk about sulfate excess sulfate if it is more than 500 part per million it causes laxative effect right laxative is the constipation constipation gastric problems now you won't get uh, uh, stool so easy this is also harmful nitrate the maximum limit prescribed is 50 part per million if you have excess nitrate in the drinking water it will cause you blue baby syndrome so it's not good for the metals for iron the maximum is 0.2 part per million nine is 0 0.05 aluminium 0 0.2 copper 3 part per million zinc 5 part per million cadmium is 0 0.05 per, part per million this is prescribed by international standard of drinking water thank you visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.